Well, this is John White, Breaking Mad, here to talk about how to get hexamine. What is hexamine? That's basically used in sol uh, solid fuel tablets, like for campers. Um, if you watch my How to Get uh, Trioxane video, you'll know uh, it's basically the same thing. And that's why you have to, like I said, in, when you buy trioxane, same thing with this. When you buy it, look up the MSDS and make sure that uh, there's no trioxane in there. Because a lot of companies will put both in. You know what I mean? Now, I looked up three MSDSs. One was Thermo Fisher Scientific. You can see it has a greater than 95% of hexamine. Uh, what the other impurities are, it didn't say. Uh, I looked up another one that I didn't mark down here because it was just crap. It was like 60 to 100% hexamine, so I didn't even write it down. But the best one, I only looked up three. So this third one is, uh, as you'll see at the bottom there, Expedition Fuel Tablets, Hexamine Solid Camping Fuel. Now that is less than 99% hexamine and less than 1% wax, and that's by weight, percentage weight. <clears throat> So you don't know exactly how much, but you can assume it's probably 98, 99% hexamine. Um, if it, you know what I mean, usually when the impurity is so small that they don't write it down, that means there isn't much impurity in there. It's just, you know what I mean, half a percent of this, a half a percent of that. I don't know. I'm just saying there's some examples where you, you know, you can almost, I mean, 99% hexamine, that's pretty good. All right, so where can you get some uh, hexamine? Um, anywhere they sell camping supplies, like a survival store, a camping store like Dick's, uh, Walmart, eBay, Amazon, maybe even some hardware stores like Lowe's. I don't know about that, but they might even have them in Lowe's and hardware stores. That's just to name a couple. So here's a picture of hexamine uh, at 280C. It sublimes in a vacuum. Um, now I want you to look at how you make this. You'd have six moles of formaldehyde, four moles of ammonia, and you'd make some hexamine and some water. Um, but I also want you to look at how you make methylamine, okay? This is actually the formula down here. Two formaldehydes for every one, every mole of ammonium chloride. <coughs> And you would make this. You'd make your methyl ammonium chloride, or if you want to call it methylamine hydrochloride, and you would also make formic acid. All right? You got two carbons here. One would split up and keep this carbonyl and be oxidized to that, and the other one would connect to the NH2 of this. Right? Now, what happens when you do this reaction is you make this stuff. This is actually more reactive than the ammonium chloride. So it will start attacking the, you know what I mean? The reaction will start being between the formaldehyde and this instead of the formaldehyde and this, right? So what you do is you want to add in excess ammonium chloride. This will cut down, adding excess will cut down on uh, the formation of dimethylamine, okay? And I want you to look up here. This is the excess you'd want to use. If you had, um, if you had six... Uh, moles here, then, you know, the ratio is 2 to 1, so you'd want 3 moles here, but the excess would be this extra mole. So a 6 to 4 ratio, molar ratio, is almost, it's not exact, but it's almost exactly what you want. You know what I'm saying? Now I want you to compare it with this and this. 6 formaldehydes, 6 formaldehydes. 4 ammonias, 4 ammonium chlorides, right? The chloride salt of ammonia. Now I want you to look at this. Now I don't know if this formula is correct or not, or you know, if, whatever. I'm just get this is guesses here now. But look at what happens when you take hexamine and you hydrolyze it, which that's a fact. You can hydrolyze it with HCl, right? I put four moles. That's the guess. Um, but you would break this down into, and you just need a catalyst. I don't think you need four moles to break it down, right? But you add in your HCl, you just need a little bit of it to catalyze this reaction, right? I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but you'd have break it down into its constituents, which would be six formaldehydes and four ammonias. 
Now, mm -hmm. since you, I put in four moles of HCl and there's four moles of ammonia, right? They react to make uh, methyl, I mean, to make ammonium chloride, four moles of ammonium chloride, right? So you see what I'm saying? If you add the HCl to this, it breaks it down into the exact ratio and components that you want to make methylamine, right? Now remember, when you're doing the reaction of making methylamine, you're going to make your methylamine salt, right? The hydrogen chloride salt. You're also going to make formic acid, right? Now if you freebase that, okay, let's say you get down in your major methylamine and you've got formic acid in there. How are you going to get it out? So you add some sodium hydroxide. What will happen is this salt, right, of your methylamine will become just methylamine without the salt. This, because uh, what I, this will turn into sodium formate, right? So now you switch it over. Remember, the methyl methylamine used to be a salt. Now it's not a salt. The formic acid used to be an acid. Now it's a salt. See how the uh, so you can easily separate it. Salts are soluble in polar solvents. You know what I mean? So you make you freebase it. This you can soak up into benzene or some kind of nonpolar solvent. This will go into the polar water, and you can easily separate it. So I, like I said, I didn't never done this reaction, but a full modern alchem alchemist did. He's actually the only one I've seen on YouTube that did a video. So I'm going to put a link to the description in down below this video, so you can go check his video out. And then sooner or later, I will make a video where I do this and talk about this reaction, how I would do it step by step. And then I will also do a video where I actually do it step by step, you know what I mean? And do the reaction, not just talk about it. Now this uh, hexamine has other uses. Now I'm not going to go over every reaction this thing can do because there's a lot of them, but I'll go over three more. One, real quick, the Duff reaction, you're basically taking a benzene ring and you're adding on a formal group so that you can make a benzaldehyde derivative. The reason why this works is because you have to have an electron donating group attached to the ring on the, in, in the first place. That activates this ring, right? If it's electron donating, it's donating ring, electrons into this uh, already electron rich pi, you know, resonance thing here. Um, it activates this, you know what I mean? It makes it more negative, more electron density. Keep in mind, you probably need a strong electron withdrawing group. You can't just have an alkyl group on there. At least that's my guess. So you mix that with the hexamine, and you're going to add your formal group. It's going to go ortho to your electron donating group. And if those two positions, those two ortho positions are filled, then it will add to the para position. Now you can take this the product that you made, right? your benzaldehyde derivative, put it in some with some zinc dust and distill it basically. And when you distill it, these two will react and benzaldehyde will come out. And that's what you can make from phenol. Phenol hexamine, make your benzaldehyde derivative, boil it in zinc dust, boom, distill out your benzaldehyde. Now that was the Duff reaction. This next one is called the Somlet reaction. Take a benzoyl halide, like benzoyl chloride, benzoyl bromide, react it with water and hexamine, do a workup, I guess, of uh, protons, water. You lose some acid here, uh, and you make benzaldehyde and your acid. The acid, you know, if you start out with benzoyl chloride, you're going to end up with hydrogen chloride gas. If you end up with Benzoyl bromide, you're going to end up with hydrobromic. Uh, so this is a nice way to make a benzaldehyde from a benzoyl halide. Next reaction is the delopine reaction. Uh, it's used to make primary amines. You can take a alkyl or benzoyl 
halide, react it with the hexamine, and make this salt. I'm guessing. All right, so this is down here. You add, you know, if it adds three moles of HCO and six waters, you end up making your primary amine, hydrochloride salt, plus six formaldehydes and three ammonium chlorides. And I want you to think about it. Remember, hexamine consists of six formaldehydes and four ammonias, right? And if it's an acid, then four ammonium chlorides. Look what it has. It has six formaldehydes and only three. What happened to the fourth ammonia or ammonium chloride? It's right up here. It made your amine. It made your primary amine. Now my guess is that that remaining formaldehyde and uh, ammonium chloride that you make doing this delapine reaction, you're probably going to make methylamine with that. So you're going to have some methylamine. A lot of methylamine is a uh, impurity trying to make your other main primary amine. Of course, that's just a guess, but it looks like it looks like it to me. Anyways, I'm not going to get into the you know these are just generic, showing you these equations or whatever. Um, but sooner or later, I will uh, give exact instructions on how I would do this, and then eventually I will do the actual experiment. Ian's all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.